Warning, the following audio transmission is based on theory and is intended for entertainment purposes only. It's Doomsday and its affiliates will not be held liable for anything your dumbass does. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome everybody to It's Doomsday Podcast. Today is July 20th, 2023. Time is 18.02 and joining me today, very special guest, Rick Austin. How are you doing today, Rick? I'm doing good. If you guys don't know who Rick Austin is, Rick Austin was featured on the TV show Doomsday Preppers and he also hosts Prepper Camp out of Saluda, North Carolina. And Rick has informed me that they're on their 10th year, so... Rick, you want to talk a little bit about that, what you have accomplished in the last 10 years with this event? Well, sure. Um, when we were on Doomsday Preppers, actually, we've been on like 10 different television shows now um, throughout the world. And uh, we even had a German television crew come come one year to you know, find out what this prepping stuff and this garden that I have, this secret garden of survival, which is basically a camouflage food forest. Uh, was all about. So um, we were, so 10 years ago, um, you know, there was a lot of people out there that were promoters that were trying to jump on the prepping craze. And Jane and I were kind of a marketing draw for a lot of these things. So we got invited to a lot of these events all over the country and the events were, run by people who weren't preppers themselves. They didn't care. They were just trying to make a buck. Um, it really wasn't a lot of education focus. They had a lot of vendors there that were trying to sell stuff. And um, education kind of took a back seat to that. And they were running convention centers, you know, and everybody was, uh, you know, bumping into each other. And it was, you know, elbow to elbow and butt to butt in these places. And we just said with a few of the other speakers, you know, we'd like to do an event that we would want to attend, you know, in an environment that is conducive to learning all this preparedness, you know, survival, wood, you know, woodcraft, whatever stuff, bushcraft type stuff. So um, we kind of came up with the idea of doing something and uh, conceived of the name Prepper Camp because we wanted to be more like a, you know, a campground type thing. And um, we ended up meeting these people who were buying goats from us because we have baby goats every year and uh, we can't keep them all. So we've got to sell them. And these people had met us at another conference and um, they said, hey, we've got a campground we'd like you to see. So we took a look at it and it was the largest campground in, in the Western North Carolina area. And uh, it was it was absolutely almost God ordained. It, it just was perfect for what we wanted to do. So um, it's a, it's a great environment. It's a great place to be great campground, lots of amenities. And um, basically we put the, the show on each year and they handle the, uh, the lodging side of things. And we become so big that they had to buy extra property to put our people on. And then we became even bigger and, uh, and we fill up just about every hotel in a 50 mile area. Oh yeah, I uh, I attended last year, and I know you do have to book <coughs> your your rooms in advance at the hotels, and even the campground, you got to book that way in advance as well. Oh yeah, yeah. They they generally they generally sell out the campground spaces in about February. So and we start selling tickets on on Black Friday, the Thanksgiving before. So something you mentioned uh, as you were speaking here that I'd like to hit on, you mentioned attending other events and, you know, you said that you wanted to have an event where people could learn more. And I'll tell you what, I have come across so many people in the prepping community 
that are like these niche preppers that feel like it's just going to be an EMP or it's just going to be a pandemic or it's just mm. going to be a nuclear disaster. <clears throat> and one of the things I try to do is revert people's focus back to you have to be well-rounded. You can't just prep for this one thing because so many other things could come out of that. And that is something that I noticed at your event is there's a lot of well-rounded people out there. You can gain a lot of different information in a lot of different topics, a lot of different areas. Are you looking for something kick-ass to add to your closet? Reaper has the hookup for t-shirts, hoodies, button-ups, hats, beanies, and plenty of other badass products. You can check out Reaper Apparel Company at www.reaperapparelco.com and use code DOOM10 for 10% off. Jester only stands behind brands he believes in, and Dan at Reaper Apparel has a mission, and Jester is on board. Go check out www.reaperapparelco.com today and use code DOOM10 for 10% off your entire order. Why be a sheep when you can reap? Use code DOOM10 for 10% off at www.reaperapparelco.com today. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've got uh, some of the best instructors in their respective fields from who come from all over the country. And um, we do 64 classes a day. So that's a that's a lot of classes, and and you can't attend the event and see everything that we that we do for the three days that we're there. So, um, yeah, there's everything from how to make cheese and make soap to you know how to grow a um, a camouflage food forest like mine to how to set up weapons to how to defend your home uh, to uh, you know close quarters combat and. Um, in, and how to set up solar panels. So we do everything in the self-reliance, off-grid, um, survival, and preparedness space. Yeah, I wish uh, I was pretty much stuck at my booth all last year. I didn't get to see one class. I'm hoping to bring someone with me this year to sit in on the booth so I could actually check some things out. Um, but outside of the classes, there's there's a huge... Um, I guess you'd call that your shopping mall there, you know, the outdoor spaces yeah. that the vendors have. Right. And there's a lot of great products you can get while you're there as well. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really been uh, an, an interesting year because a few years back when we had the, uh, the pandemic, a lot of these small vendors kind of went out of business. So there was it was a little lean in terms of I mean we still had a lot of people there that were vendors but just uh, this year it's like uh, things exploded and and everybody with a really cool idea and a way to execute it you know for a for a um, a way to solve a problem for preparedness minded people uh, they're there this year I mean we are absolutely full at the seams in terms of space for. Um, for vendors. So we're, you know, selling everything from uh, this kind of cool AR-15 magazine that the spring doesn't um, settle after a while and, and become less springy to, um, you know, essential oils. And uh, um, it, it's just everything that you could imagine from a preparedness standpoint, uh, some really neat water carrying things that uh, are, are new to the market. Um, you know, when you're carrying a water bottle, if it's empty or full, it's usually the same size and it takes up space and, it, you know, it's it's heavy and lugged around. And these things are essentially collapsible water bo bottles. So, um, you know, you just fill it up and it's got water in it and it's full uh, or when it's empty, it's folds nicely into your pocket. So that's so basically collapsible <laughs> vessel that expands yep. for your water. Yep. Yeah, very, very cool. So, Rick, yeah. I wanted to kind of get into what the first year of Prepper Camp was like. Um, we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> I mean, I've run events before. I, I've, I've run a lot of events before in my professional life. Um, and I've run some per pretty big events. But this was all new, you know, new people, new crew, new volunteers. And um, we didn't know what we didn't know. And, um, it was, it was, um, 
it was tough. It was a fantastic event. I had people, you know, asking me halfway through the event, are you going to do another one next year? Are you going to do another? So they, were, so they were so happy about it. And you know, people had gone to a lot of different events. And I'm a pretty, um, I don't know if it's OCD, but controlling guy. And, um, you know, I, I really want things to go off without a hitch. So it's pretty important to me that we run a tight ship. And there were a lot of things that we didn't anticipate and a lot of problems and everything you could possibly conceive. But uh, that first year, <clears throat> we were having some severe thunderstorms that were right during the middle of the prepper camp. And I watched these black, black clouds come over prepper camp and they literally parted around prepper camp and went the other direction. Oh, wow. I mean, just like it created a circle around prep and the hair stood up. It still stands up in the back of my neck when I think of it. And I said, you know, I think we're doing something right. So, um, yeah, that's divine. We, that's divine know, intervention right there. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. And, and so many things, I mean, I don't know, you know, your audience or you, but, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of, of God in the event and it's not intended that way. It's just, you know, you can feel the presence there. There's just so much that goes on that that just couldn't happen any, any other way. Um, during the the pandemic, when everybody was shutting down their events because they couldn't go and, you know, they were locked in, um, we found a couple of loopholes in North Carolina law. And because we were a campground and because we were um, an educational event, we could still have it. We just had to do the social distancing thing for the vendors. And uh, so it, we still had the event when no one else has having any, any preparedness events. Hmm. But uh, you know, back to your question about the first year, it was, it was tough. And um, I seriously wasn't sure I wanted to do it again, but so many people asked me and I said, you know, what you're asking me is you're asking like, you're, it's like you're asking a woman who just gave birth if the, she's ready to have another baby. And I said, I, let me, let me think about it. <laughs> Cause <laughs> it is a massive, massive undertaking. You know, we, we have 2000 people at our event and it feels comfortable. It's spread out. People just don't feel like there's 2000 people there. Uh, but all those people have to have a place to sit and all of them need to be able to see the screen. And we could be bigger if we wanted to be, but we just cut off the, um, the attendance at that level, because it, then it starts to get just too big, you know, where people can't see the screens or the TVs. And we just want, we want a good, high quality experience first and foremost. We want people to be happy with the event. And we really don't do any other advertising for the event and we sell out every single year. So word gets around and, uh, you know, and I would, I was thinking that a lot of these people are repeat, but um, last year, for example, my first class, nine o'clock in the morning on Friday, I asked people who were, who were there, it, you know, how many were first time prepper campers and it, over 90% of them raised their hand and said, this is the first time we've been. So I said, wow, <laughs> that's, that's amazing. And I said, why? And they said, um, look at what's going on, Biden. So people are waking up. People are waking up. Do you have enough food in your pantry for when disaster strikes? Go to www.readywise.com and utilize code DOOM10 for 10% off your entire food order. ReadyWise offers long-term food storage items such as chicken and beef that last up to 15 years. But that's not all. Go to www.readywise.com and use our code DOOM10 for 10% off of organic food as well. Offering chili, pasta, and soups, they have you covered. Did we mention they have fruits? Bananas, blueberries, strawberries, and apples, just to name a few. With many more food options for your home, car, or bug out bag, ReadyWise has your six. Go to www.readywise.com now and utilize code DOOM10 for 10% off. That's and I'll tell you what, I had a great experience out there last year and a couple of things. Number one, the community of people there is just great. You're going to meet, yep. if you guys come out to this event, 
you're going to meet some of the nicest people, some very well-rounded people. Everybody has a great thought process out there. And I mean, even when people are coming out there and bringing their children, the most well-behaved children I've ever seen, it's, it's simply mind blowing. Um, and, and what's interesting about this, cause you have people coming from all over the place and they're all meshing so well together at this event, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I got to meet, um, I got to meet a bunch of people out there that I keep in contact with today. For an example is uh Toolman Tim. I still keep in contact with him. I met him for the first time out there. And then, uh, what was interesting is this was last year was the first year we were ever out there. And I had somebody in my ear for a couple years telling me, Jester, you got to go to this event, man. You have to go. You have to go. They apparently, this woman attends this event every year. And she was really pushing me like, you got to go. You got to go check this out. You'll love it. And I was like, well, I'm not going to go unless I get a booth and I do the show there. And I did. And then what was really cool was a lot of people that listened to the show got to meet me in person for the first time. And I was like, oh, this is super yeah. cool. Like, yeah. I'm getting to meet fans of the show. This is super cool. And I'm meeting all these new people and I'm getting all these new guests that want to come on. So for us, it was a really great time. And that's, you know, even though I didn't get to attend any of the classes, that's the main reason I want to go back this year is to network and meet more people. You know, that to me, that was the best part about going. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's really amazing the quality of people that are there. Like you were sort of alluding to, I, I tell a story and it gets me choked up every time I do, but um, a couple of years into the event, we had a guy who was selling rabbits because it's the number one source of protein if you, and they don't take up much space and, you know, you don't have to feed them much and they don't make any noise and three girls and one boy will produce 90, that's nine zero full grown rabbits in a year because rabbits do what they do. Um, and he was teaching a class on raising rabbits and uh, this he was also selling rabbits there too. And, uh, this mom and dad and little girl, um, came by and they, she's like, oh, I, I really want one of these rabbits. And the mom's kind of saying, no, no dear, we just can't afford it. You know, we can't, we can't do that right now. And one of the guys who was standing there at the booth, who was just another, another attendee said, I'll buy the rabbit for her. Wow. So that, that just, you know, like I said, um, it's just the quality of people that are there. That's just amazing. Yeah, no, it absolutely is. And I mean, everybody there is extremely friendly. Nobody is standoffish. Nobody there, you know, has the mentality of like, oh, I'm too big to talk to you or, you know, I'm too important to waste my time with you. Everybody was super friendly. Yeah. And they're all having fun, too. You know, they're learning a lot of stuff and, and having a good time. And, and, and we like to have a good time, too. So we, you know, Saturday night, we all get together and we do a little award ceremony before our our uh, keynote speaker. And um, it's it's um, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So I'm assuming you're just you're going to keep doing this every year as long as people will show up. Right. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. <laughs> It's, it, it just depends on what happens in the world. I, I, be, I was thinking that uh, we wouldn't see this year with everything that's going on. You know, I just I thought we'd end up um, in a situation where we'd be at war with China and, um, you know, all bets would be off. But uh, or, you know, the financial system would would collapse before we got to the event. But it appears we're going to make it. So um, so that's good. But we're. Another interesting thing that that happened over the years too is, uh, you know, we've had people that have come year after year, and you know they've learned stuff at prepper camp and various different skills. And when we had the the pandemic and people were locked down in their homes and couldn't get out, or when other people have told me that you know when they've had a uh, a freak tornado or a hurricane or something like that, that they thank God that they were able to go to prepper camp because it taught them stuff and made them more prepared for when those events happened. Right. And you know, that's, that's something I try to push on the show a lot is, you know, at, when we talk about being doomsday preppers, when we talk about preparedness, everybody has it in their minds that a lot of us are conspiracy nuts or we're whack jobs and we're prepping for a nuclear war. That's never going to happen or something 
totally mm-hmm. outlandish when a lot of us in the preparedness community are out there pushing stuff. A lot of it is first aid stuff, disaster preparedness, things that you'll encounter in your life, you know, and right. I know, you know, doing the show, I've, I've talked to a lot of people and a lot of these guys <laughs> out there are like, Hey, I just want to have a good food stock. How do I start? You know, if, if the dollar collapses, where do I need to be at? Or we'll get on the topic of preparing for the tornado, how you mentioned. And it's just amazing to me that our government is not pushing general preparedness more on the citizens. And I mean, the reason why is they want you to be dependent on the corporations. But you exactly. would you would think to some extent that the general overall public, the general public would have some sort of an idea of, hey... I need to have a 30-day food supply, or I just need to be prepared for a power outage if it happens. And so many people are just not. No, and and I have had so many people over the last 10 years that have told me, you know, we were so glad that we were prepared because we never thought we were both going to lose our jobs at the same time. I mean, that is a life-changing event. That is, you know, the end of the world as you know it. It's not a nuclear holocaust but you know that's something that you need to be prepared for and the fact that they had food storage and you know medicine stored and you know the basic supplies they were able to make it through and uh, people just don't even think about that that's that's a huge thing no and i refer to that is you know everybody (laughs) has their own individual doomsdays they don't have to be global they don't have to be nationwide a good example this was the freeze in texas where we lost over 250 people that, that passed away in that event due to being due to not being prepared. Right. And right. for those people in Texas during that freeze, that was their individual doomsday, right? Where preparedness and being ready for that could have saved their lives, but they sadly were not. Fire is one of the most basic essentials for survival. Whether you're camping, hiking, or preparing for disaster, Blackbeard has your six. Go to www.blackbeardfire.com and utilize code DOOMSDAY for 10% off your entire purchase. Blackbeard offers stormproof matches, plasma arc lighters, fire starters, and ferro rods, all of which are great for your bug out bag. Once again, Go to www.blackbeardfire.com and utilize code DOOMSDAY for 10% off your entire purchase. Yeah, and people don't know what they don't know. And unless they unless they practice it, they can they can buy all the stuff that they want to buy. I mean, you know, there's a lot of of closet preppers out there, not, not so many closet preppers like it used to be where people don't admit that they're preppers, but they just store a lot of stuff in a closet and someday they're going to use it maybe. Um, and if you don't practice with stuff and you don't use things, I mean, I have people telling me, well, I don't need to set up a, you know, a permaculture garden because I'm storing seeds. Well, let's say that this disaster, whatever it happens to be, happens in the winter. What are you going to do? You can't start growing stuff until the spring, and then you're going to have to wait three months for anything that's a you know traditional annual garden variety vegetable type thing to to be ready to harvest. So you got a long time to go, and and if you don't know how to grow something, if you've never done it before, the time to start is not, and the time to learn is not when it's life or death. Right, exactly. And, I, and I'll tell you what, I experiment with different gardening things every year. Um, so I'm, I'm also in North Carolina. And the one thing I discovered over the years here is the Cherokee purple tomatoes grow very well. And a lot of people can't grow these around the country for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. They do right. well here. So every year I'm experimenting a little bit different with these particular tomatoes to find out what can get me to harvest quicker. Right. So this year I'm doing I'm doing them all in five gallon buckets and kind of moving them around um, and and messing with with the rainwater collection system to try to get these things hydrated more to see what's going to yield me more. And this is something you can't do after shit has hit the fan. You have to do these things now. Right. Right. Um, So now it's safe to say that prepper camp is the biggest number one event in the country. All right. Right. So I'm kind of I'm kind of curious. Do you have people from other events like calling you or knocking on your door saying, hey, Rick, 
what do I need to do to grow my event? How do I get to where you are? Is that something that happens? I, I have people that um, have contacted me over the years that, that wanted to do a prepper camp in their region. And I'm going, I, I don't need to. I pull people from California. I pull people from Texas. I pull people from wherever. I, we don't need to. And so I'm not going to run an event over there because this takes 10 months of my of my blood, sweat, and tears to put on a, a three-day event once a year. That, and I'm I'm anal about it being perfect and a great experience for people. And it's not about the money for myself and my wife, survivor Jane. It's, it has nothing to do with that. This is, this is our ministry. That's how we look at it. You know, we, we just want to teach people how to live the way that we do for them to be prepared. So it's, it's not about trying to make money and we could have a lot more people and we could have a lot more revenue in, and we could franchise this thing all over the country but you lose control. And, you know, I was, I was a a businessman um, before all of this started. And then, you know, we both retired at age 50 and we've been doing this for off grid for 15 years and, and doing prepper camp for 10. And, um, you know, I, I, there's a lot of things I learned in business about trying to grow too fast and trying to do too much. And um, it's, it's really, there's just no benefit in it to to do that and a lot of a lot of downside because I can kind of control the the venue that we're at. Um, I can go visit it if I need to. Uh, I've worked out, you know, we have a relationship with a lot of people and the vendors that are involved and you know the tent the tent people alone, that is a huge, huge expense to be able to put up these forty by sixty foot tents for all of our classrooms and being able to have all the, uh, the technology that goes with that and the big screen TVs and the computers and that sort of thing. It's just, there's a lot of coordination. So it's, I, you know, people ask me and I just said, you know, I, I'm not interested because we, we have one event that we do. This is our ministry and, and we do it well. And, um, you know, we have people coming from your market to go to our place. Right, exactly. So how many speakers are going to be there this year? We have over 40. I have to, I'd have to count them, but I think there's 42. So, uh, and we're teaching 64 classes a day. So some of these guys are teaching more than one class, but um, it's, it's, um, it's pretty amazing. I mean, I've got some new speakers and every year we tried to, you know, for the people that come back every year or come back from last year, just even that, uh, we want to have new stuff for people to be able to see. So it doesn't get old and stale and there's always something new that's going on in the world that we want to be prepared for. So, uh, we, um, we just have a, a, a lot of, of new classes and new speakers, um, you know, every single year. So, did I was I answering your question or did I? Did I did uh, no, I... no, no. You you over answered a little bit, but that's perfect because okay. it's, it's more. Inf- it's definitely more information out there for the people that are listening that are you know debating on getting tickets or if they should come out something like that. Uh, and that's a that's a good segue. So I was pushing Prepper Camp pretty hard last year through the show. Like, hey, this is our first time going. We're going to be there. Come out, mm-hmm. meet us, et cetera, et cetera. And I had a lot of people that were hesitant about coming. And this was the question that I got asked. I don't know how many times they said, well, don't you think the government is going to come in and like shut that event down? And I'm like, I don't see why they would. But I wanted to ask you, has Uncle Sam ever knocked on the door and said, hey, Rick, what are you doing over here with this event? No. um, And we have a lot of, uh, you know, current and former military that are there, current and former law enforcement that are there. Uh, yeah, we we don't have any problem with with that. Uh, what we've had issues with is the libtard, liberal, uh, left wing media trying to get into the event, and we have a strict no uh, media policy. So we we you know we've we've had NBC in London ask us. Um, Channel 5, which is one of the big uh, networks in France, wanted to come over. Uh, We've had um, ABC, uh, CBS. We've had 60 Minutes. 
And when, when the producer for 60 Minutes said they wanted to come, I said, you know what? We're not interested. I said, when I was in business, if 60 Minutes was knocking on the door, you lock the doors and get out the back because <laughs> there's there can't be anything good that comes of that. So. Right. Yeah. A lot of all. Oh, yeah. lot, okay. So I, I would look at it like this. So, and, and that's a and that's a privacy thing for our our attendees too. Well, you yeah, know, I could uh, understand that, but I, I'm nobody just, needs to, nobody needs to be doxxed or anything like that. Right. And I'm thinking in my head, a lot of these media companies that would come out of come out, it would just be a smear campaign. Want to be a guest on the show? Email it's doomsdaypodcast at gmail dot com. That's it's doomsday podcast at gmail.com you know. yeah well that's exactly what they're looking for yeah exactly what they're looking for there's been a few um media outlets that we have allowed in um business insider was one of them but i did a lot of screening of the individual who was writing the article beforehand and you know she seemed above board she was truly interested and she learned a lot at the event and she wrote good stuff about us so um but it's always it's always something that you know that they want to smear the people that are prepared because as you said you know so astutely before um, you know they're in bed with the government and the government wants everybody dependent on them so now there is really has not been any issue with anybody you know with the government coming in and doing anything the bigger issue for me is you know this year in particular there have been a lot of small first time events out there that were in the preparedness realm and these people that you know decide that they want to try to do something themselves and i'm i'm all for you know more education out there but there's a lot of people that were disappointed in the events that they went to and i think that there's a lot of people that would come to prepper camp but eh, you know i already spent 60 bucks i already spent 100 bucks on another thing and it really wasn't that good and how do I know this is going to be that good? So, you know, that's that's part of the reason for doing interviews like this so that people can understand and go to the website and see everything that we have to offer and, you know, all the different classes. And once they look at the descriptions of the classes, it's like, man, that's great. I, I want to know that. Oh, I want to know that. Oh, I want to know that. So, um, and, and, you know, a lot of people come as couples. So they split up and, uh, the woman goes in one direction and the man goes in the other and she might go to the canning class and, you know, he, he might go to the, um, you know, d home defense class, which is taught by a, you know, army special forces guy. So um, there's just, there's just an overwhelming amount of information that you can get from these people. I totally understand. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's a big thing too. You know, when someone sees on the website, Hey, I want to learn this specifically, that then becomes their motivation to get the ticket and make the trip out there. Um, and Rick, we're about at our time frame here. Can you tell people uh, where they can go and they could find these tickets at? Yeah, sure. Uh, you can find out really everything about the event and the, the speakers and the classes and the class descriptions and look at some of the pictures of the events of the past and they're all at preppercamp.com just that simple preppercamp.com and rick anything else you'd like to tell the audience before we're out of here uh look forward to seeing you again this year and um we're putting you over with the solar guys who don't have any generators, so it should be much easier for you to uh, <laughs> nice. do your podcast without having interference of loud noises going on beside you. So, uh, hope hopefully that'll be great. And uh, you know, we are the last weekend of September. It's in Saluda, North Carolina, and um, that's just on the you know in the Appalachian Mountains of North Carolina. So it's a beautiful area. And it's just starting to be fall, so it's cooler, and uh, you know the foliage is starting to look good. So it's a great, great time for the event too. This is an emergency action message. At approximately 1 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Nora is tracking 15 ICBM nuclear missiles inbound to the following cities. Orlando, Miami, Pittsburgh, Dover, Newark, Richland, Philadelphia, New York City, 
Baltimore, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Boston, Seattle, Detroit. This is an extremely deadly situation. Stay tuned, the next emergency message will be a presidential address.